When the enemy evolves, the only option is to evolve alongside it. That was the case for the German army when it faced the impressive British tanks of World War I. That obstacle was the trigger to develop the first anti-tank rifle in history, the Mauser 1918 Tigur, a model that today occupies the corridors and facilities of military museums around the world, but that 100 years ago was the terror of British armored vehicles. In this new episode of Military History we'll see how it was developed, what its capabilities were and what impact it had on the first great confrontation of the 20th century. The history of the first anti-tank rifle has a fairly clear origin date, June 17, 1917, when German soldiers discovered that their anti-armor rounds were no longer effective against British Mark IV tanks. The arrival of those tanks heralded a new chapter in the history of land warfare. The image of 400 enemy tanks going over the barricades was surely terrifying for thousands of German soldiers who had neither the necessary weapons nor the experience to face them. Until then, 7.92mm ammunition and hunting rifles had been enough, but no more. The battle ended in victory for the British, albeit with the death of 4,000 soldiers. On the German side, even worse than defeat was the feeling of facing an insurmountable enemy. Although during the Second World War the Germans had an impressive fleet of tanks, by 1917 their arsenal was reduced and only the A7V stood out slow and rather useless machinery. Designing and producing a fleet of new tanks was not an option, there was neither the time nor the necessary material, the only alternative was to face the problems with tactics and a powerful weapon. As always, when faced with an obstacle, the possibility of innovating arises. Within nine months, the Mauser company had a novelty ready to counter the British tanks. Before going into details, we want to invite you to discover our new channel, Military Might. Here we'll carry out in-depth analyzes of the most powerful, modern and surprising weapons of war in the world. So, if you like military weaponry, you must check out Military Might. You'll find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment. Let's go on with our rifle. The Mauser Mod 1918 Tankaware rifle was created by the Mauser company in January 1918, and by May of that same year it was ready for mass production at the Oberndorf M. Necker factory. They were enthusiastically received and distributed in anti-tank detachments specially created to deal with this new obstacle. In total, more than 15,000 units were produced and British tanks immediately felt the impact, it was the first time in history that an army had a rifle capable of penetrating the thick armor of main battle tanks. The Mauser 1918 Tigur was a single-shot bolt-action rifle, which used the Mauser system, in which cartridges were manually loaded into the chamber. In terms of design, it was a fairly simple and rudimentary model, which made use of structural tweaks to accommodate a much larger ammunition with greater penetration. Also, the 1918 Tigur had a pistol grip and bipod, but no recoil-reducing mechanism, such as a special stock or muzzle brake. Its aiming mechanisms were a blade-type front sight, and a tangential sight graduated from 100 to 500 meters, with 100-meter magnifications. The rifle was operated by a two-man team, the shooter and the ammunition supplier, both trained to shoot. The first shooter carried a bag with 13 cartridges and a rifle, his other partner carried a canvas bag with 20 cartridges, a box with another 72 cartridges and the bipod. Due to the heavy weight of this weapon, it could only be used in a fixed position, which was annoying for the soldiers. But this rifle destroyed not only tanks, but also the bodies of German soldiers. The large recoil of the 1918 Tigur was very strong for the shooter, and could sometimes break his clavicle or dislocate his shoulder. Each unit was 1.69 meters long, with a 984 millimeter barrel, that is, almost 1 meter. It weighed 15.9 kilograms empty, and reached 18.5 kilograms loaded and with the bipod for firing. It had an effective range of 500 meters, with a maximum shell velocity of 780 meters per second. In anti-tank armaments, ammunition is a fundamental aspect to evaluate power. Remember that the shells must penetrate the armor of the tanks, but they must also be light to carry. 
In the case of the Mauser 1918 Tigur, the 13.2 by 92 SR armor-piercing cartridge with semi-flange and hardened steel core bullets, often called simply 13 by 92 Mauser, was used. It had originally been designed for a new water-cooled heavy machine gun, the tank UND Flieger, or TUF, to be used against tanks and aircraft. This machine gun was being developed and was to be supplied in 1919, but the arrival of the rifle took away a lot of prominence from it. It is often said that the 13x92R is the origin of the .50 BMG cartridge, but this is not true. Studies leading to the .50 BMG were well advanced when the Allies learned of the 13x92SR. The most significant disadvantage was that the 1918 Mauser was a novelty, and shooters often did not understand how to use it effectively. The fact is that the bullet for an anti-tank gun is still an ordinary bullet, but with high penetrability. Therefore, in addition to having to get into the tank, which is not that difficult, it was necessary for the bullets to hit certain critical places, which requires precision and aim. It was necessary to destroy the main components, the places where the crew is located and so on. The results of the rifle are the subject of debate among historians. Many claim it was capable of penetrating 22mm armor, albeit at short ranges. In addition, for an optimal impact, the shot had to have a certain angle and hit those sensitive parts that we previously detailed. The ammunition was so powerful that, even if it hit the crew, it was capable of inflicting severe damage from flying splinters inside the tank. While this didn't destroy the machine, it did at least put it out of action for a limited time. Over time, the Germans devised their own attack tactics, taking advantage of the slowness of the tanks and using a combination of grenades and large-caliber gunfire. Germany resumed the plan to create an anti-tank machine gun, and based on the tank-aware rifle created the MG-18 TUF machine gun, a heavy weapon that entered service in the last stretch of the war, too late to make a significant difference. It is difficult to establish whether the tank aware achieved its goal of significantly reducing the involvement of British tanks in the fighting. What is certain is that its commissioning did not prevent the German defeat. According to the Treaty of Versailles, the German country was prohibited from possessing anti-tank weapons, but even so, the Mauser 1918 continued in secret service, even participating in the attack on Poland in 1939, already under orders from Nazi Germany. The tank gore was the first of many armaments intended to match the strength between a foot soldier and a main battle tank. In short, it is a concept that continues to this day in the form of missile launchers such as the Javelin and the FM Stinger. Currently the anti-tank rifle is in numerous military museums around the world. Thanks for joining us. We invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to find out about all our updates. We'll meet again in the next military history video.